A lot of what we do in the cattle industry is unpredictable, the seasons, the weather, so it's nice to have something where predictability is significantly high, so that's why we use these sort of genetics. The key things that we've focused on in the last three decades has been to use functional analysed genetics to advance our herd, particularly its productivity and as a consequence its profitability. We've done that by using a tight management template that reflects those goals and also as well by collecting significant amounts of data that we can then use to make informed decisions about where our herd's going. Our first foray into, into a change in genet genetics was uh, transitioning from a, a Hereford based herd. But it became obvious that we needed to have further adaptation in our cattle to operate in a tick area in the subtropics. They weren't doing the job for us. So our first purchases were of Brahmin bulls out of Brahmin Wick and Rockhampton. That was a good start. But then as we progressed, it became evident to us that we needed to, to have something that would take us forward and that we could measure our advancement there. We use it with a good deal of confidence now, particularly dealing with people who have multiple generations of data behind their cattle. We still use the adage, if you don't have data, it's just an opinion. We feel very confident now in where we're going with that. And also that level of confidence increases because over time using this, it has a compounding effect. So with each, each generation, we're adding a little bit to our herd every year. And it's something that uh, unlike a lot of other things in the industry, you actually own that compounded interest. So our breeding objectives uh, principally is to breed tropically adapted fertile cattle. So when we buy or breed bulls, we're looking to bring genetics into our herd that'll increase the productivity and efficiency of our cow herd. The main EBVs we look at are the fertility traits, so um, scrotal size uh, EBV, which is correlated to early puberty in cattle. We also look at the scrotal size EBV and the age at which our bulls reach puberty, because that is correlated to the age at which their sisters and daughters will reach puberty as well. So we want cattle that, and heifers that will be able to conceive early. And then moving on from that, we look at days to calving, which is where a negative is a positive. So the, the lower the value, the better. And so we want cows that can rebreed quickly after they've calved for the first time. We do select strongly on temperament. It makes management much easier to have quiet cattle and it makes it a lot easier to run cattle with less people as well. So we do focus on that. What we do look at when we're selecting bulls is that we recognise that we'll need a team of bulls to do the job that we want. There's no such thing as the perfect bull. So we look to get a team that has a good balance of those traits and look to move our herd forward in terms of its genetic plan. Basically, we recorded all the maternal data in a database from 1992, put it onto Herdmaster, which is a sort of herd recording software which integrates well with BreedPlan. So we do that, we record all, because all the cows are individually identified, we record all the birth dates of each of their calves and um, record that and then that all goes into the database complete with uh, sire information which we latterly have got through sire verification through genomically testing so we have those records as well and all of that data together with the weights and the traits that we're recording as we're now entered in, into breed plan which are the growth traits plus the fertility traits that we focus on which are days to calving um, data and uh, scrotal measures for young bulls that all gets recorded and is able to be seamlessly go from this database um, to ABRI to help to generate the EBVs that we require. The idea of that intense data collection is to keep all of the animals accountable so that we know who's turned up with a calf and they need to turn up with a calf every year. The rest of the production system is entirely 
driven towards supporting the management of the herd. So we're looking to keep costs low. So we've got very minimal input, so we don't do any dipping or dealing with ticks. So we're relying upon having an adapted herd uh, to deal with those sort of challenges. So it's, it's really just a very simple system based on keeping costs low, the cattle being expected to turn up with the calf and just eating the grass that's available and managing that. found it a useful exercise. We went back and benchmarked the first group of bulls we, we bought uh, in today's values. That first group of bulls in 1985, they're particularly uh, one of the traits that we followed the most, uh, days to calving. That first group, uh, their average days to calving was minus 1.5, which at the time was reasonable. But the group of bulls that we put out this year, they averaged uh, minus 15.8. So that's a significant difference over that period of time. And we think it's reflective in the way our cow herd performs as well. The other measure of where our herd is moved to, and we're able to analyse that probably a little bit more in depth since we've now put the whole herd onto breed plan and genomically tested our herd as well, is that uh, in terms of the breed average measured by the, uh, the, the dollar index, we're well in front of the breed average. My PhD thesis is looking at genotype by environment interaction for beef cattle fertility traits in Northern Australia. That's through the University of Queensland. I thought a deep understanding of that would be something that I could really add to this business and hopefully add to the industry as well. I think the topic that I'm doing, which is genotype by environment interaction, that really reflects my key interest in the beef industry, looking at cattle that can perform in spite of their environment. I, I think one point about uh, genomics and these other things, they're very useful tools, but they are tools. They need to be paired with really good management and really good record keeping. I think the key part about that is our family have always had our business driven by data and by the analysis of genetics. So that's never been a transition into it. It's just the way it's always been done and it's the way that it always will be done. I think what I would say is that the analysis of EBVs, it gives you a tool to measure your profitability and your progress. And it's a tangible way to ensure that you're future proofing your business and providing something sustainable that will go on for generations. Our advice is simple, breeding values do work. The new technology that's coming, particularly uh, the genomics, um, it's exciting, it needs to be truthed all the time with phenotypical data, but I'm quite sure that that's something that's going to take us ahead uh, and it's here, so use it.